ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا بعد today shall we continue the explanation of page 321 of surah taha the last page of surah taha today is sunday 9th shawwal 14:44 uh, which is 30th April 2023. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says concerning Allah's statement, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرَ عَلَيْهَا and enjoin the salat on your family and be patient in offering salat yourself. This means to save your family from the punishment of Allah, you need to order them to establish the prayer. That's if you love your family and if you want your family to join you in the hereafter. And you also need to be patient in performing it. And also need to be patient in ordering your family members to offer salat because uh, it's difficult to wake up kids in the morning for them to offer wudu on time before you can go to the masjid and it's not an easy task, but it's a task that is mandatory uh, for you to do if you want to save your family members from the hellfire. And of course, kids, if they get used to offering salat since childhood, it'll be second nature to them when they reach the age of puberty uh, uh, for them to offer salat. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, enjoy the salah on your family and be patient in offering them also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ya ayyuhal ladhina amu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara all you who believe ward off yourselves and your families against a fire so push away the fire through uh, ordering your family to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially the salat. This is in Surah al talaq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, protect yourself and your families from hellfire. How do you do that? By ordering them to obey Allah and stopping them from disobeying Allah. And of course, salat is the number one pillar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask people about. And the correct opinion Allah knows best that the person who does not pray is a disbeliever, irrespective of whether he thinks that praying is is mand mandatory or not. And that's why I know the Madahib in the in Islam, anyone that stops praying, he is to be ordered to pray and given a respite for three days. If he does not do that, then he is to be executed. Uh, some scholars said as a punishment for leaving salat, others say as a punishment for leaving Islam. But the best options, I guess the best, uh, yeah, the best uh, case scenario is that a person doesn't pray, is that his Islam is is up for grabs. Uh, there's a difference of opinion about his Islam. So uh, a person, uh, you know, and as we said many times, parents, subhanAllah, they concentrate so much on worldly matters. Uh, they kids to pray Salat after the age of seven uh, because according to them they need to get enough rest for them to wake up at eight o'clock and go to school and of course as we always say we want the Muslim Ummah to be uh, Ummah of, of uh, doctors, engineers, astronauts if they are going to be on faith. They must choose one of two either Religion or dunya, of course, they have to choose religion. So wake them up for salat. If they cannot wake up for school, then so be it. But salat, they must wake up for it. And this is something that uh, we remind the parents about is that when your kids grow up, if you see that they are not praying, then blame yourself. If you didn't do what Allah told you to do. But of course, if you did what Allah told you to do, and then they turn out to be a bad apple, then you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to punish you for it. But if you do and you just push them to the worldly matters, and then you leave your job as a parent to and a shepherd to make sure that they pray a lot, then of course you are going to sow what you reaped. Ibn Abi 
Asim reported that Zaid bin Aslam reported from his father that he and Yarfa would sometimes spend the night at Umar bin Khattab's house. Allah had a certain time of night that he would get up and pray night prayer. However, sometimes he would not get up for it on time. Then we would say he is not going to get up like he usually does. But then when he would awaken, he would make his family get up as well for night prayer. And he would recite this verse to remind himself of Allah's order to him because Umar, you know, as tough as he was, he was very, very fearful of Allah's commands. And he would say, What more ahl? and enjoy the salah on your family and be patient in offering them. Allah said, We ask not of you a provision. This means that if you establish the prayer, your sustenance will come to you from where you did not expect. And subhanAllah, many Muslims uh, today, they, they have a job where they are able to actually go to the masjid five times a day. Like In their job, no one tells them why you're praying. And yet, they choose to say that, oh, I'm working, and work is also a ibadah, it is a worship. Or, uh, you know, I cannot worship of worship, I need to wait until I go home, then I pray. These people, if they believe what they are saying, they are idiots and stupid and have not, no knowledge about the religion. But most likely, they don't want to pray, and they're just making up an excuse. Because... Your job is the rizq that Allah has given you. So why would you leave that which you were ordered to do, which is worship, for that which Allah has guaranteed for you, which is your rizq? Allah has given you rizq. وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُعَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed the rizq. You know, as the hadith says, before you are four months old, as a baby in the, in the womb of your mother, at, at, at four months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says an angel that, that writes your rizq when you're going to be born when you're going to die whether you're going to be from the people of hellfire or people of jannah and also the deeds that you will do so this is decreed the rizq is decreed allah is asking you to undertake the necessary necessary steps to achieve this rizq. but these necessary steps do not mean disobeying allah because this is not what allah ordered you allah ordered you to undertake the halal necessary, necessary steps to achieve and uh, Gain the risk that Allah has decreed for you, and you and Allah also order you to worship Him. So you should not leave worship for your risk. And of course, the risk sometimes Allah Subhanahu wa Taala stops it from a person because of his disobedience. So if you stop praying because of that job, sooner or later Allah may take away that job from you. This is as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. And whosoever has taqwa of Allah, he will make a way for him to get out from every difficulty. And he will provide for him from sources that he could never imagine he would get that risk from. Allah also says, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only created jinn kind and mankind so that they would worship Allah alone. Worship him alone. That monotheism. And Allah did not Create you to work and produce, as some people say. I like you to worship Him, and then if you work and produce, then so be it. It's good, but make sure that you don't let go and you don't neglect the fact that you were created primarily to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that someone goes to the masjid and prays day and night there, and then he leaves his family hungry, or he doesn't seek to gain sustenance for himself. No. Go pray in the masjid the five times that Allah Taala has told you to pray. Do the other halal and haram, and go seek the, your sustenance as the Prophet Sallam and the companions did. So, if you want to understand the religion, as we always say, you have to see how it was applied by the Prophet Sallam and by the companions. If the companions all stayed in the masjid worshiping Allah, then we should do that. But they didn't do that. Each and every one of them had a trade. Uh, some of them were rich. Some of them were poor. Some of them went to jihad, some of them uh, taught people, etc., etc. So this is how we should be as Muslims. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take us out of this quagmire that the Muslims are living in today. Quagmire of humiliation, uh, civil wars, killings, etc. We have to go back to the religion, the original religion that Muhammad 
came with and that the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, practiced. That's the religion that we need to go back to, not the religion that is Western sanctioned. And uh, because there's a hadith that says that Allah will, you know, if you do four things, Allah will humiliate you and will not, will not take away the humiliation until you go back to the, the new religion. The religion he, he is, he said, is talking about is the Islam that was practiced by the companions. And the four conditions is if the Muslims deal with interest and they follow the uh, the behinds of uh, cows plowing the land. That means they only follow dunya, and they're only happy with worldly uh, possessions and achievements. And they leave away the jihad. If these four conditions are met, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will inflict humiliation on the Muslims, and He will not take it away from us, not through democracy or not any other means, except if we go back to the true religion. Inna Verily, Allah is all, the all-provider, owner of power, the most strong. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا We ask not of your provision, we provide for you. So just obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and order your family to obey Allah and to pray. Verily, I tell me that Ibn Majah recorded that Abu Harad said, that the Messenger of Allah said, يقول الله ان ادم تفرغ لعبادتي املا صدرك غنى واسد فقرك وان لم تفعل ملات صدرك شغلا ولم اسد فقرك الله تعالى يقول اصنف ادم perform my worship and i will fill your chest with wealth and fulfill your needs if you do not do so chest with toil and i will not fulfill your needs it is also reported from zaid bin thabit that he heard the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying ma kanat al dunya hamma farraq allah alayhi amra wa ja'ala faqrahu bayna aynayh وَلَمْ يَأْتِهِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَا كُتِبَ لَهُ وَمَنْ كَانَتِ الْآخِرَةُ نِيَّةَ جَمَعَ لَهُ أَمْرَهُ وَجَعَلَ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ وَأَتَتُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاغِمَةً Whoever makes the worldly life his major concern, then Allah will scatter his situation for him. That means make it difficult. And his poverty will be placed between his eyes. He will not get from this world anything except that which has already been written for him anyway. And whomever makes the hereafter his intention. Okay, let's understand this hadith clearly. Because this is the point that we've been trying to say over and over again. The Prophet Salam says it the best. So any person who makes the worldly life his major concern, that means every since he wakes up in the morning, all he cares about is dunya. Then Allah will scatter the situation for him. He will make dunya difficult for him. And his problems will be placed between his eyes. He will always feel poor. He will always feel poor. Because his major concern is dunya. If he gets a million dollars, he wants another hundred million dollars. As the Prophet Salam said, if the son of Adam is given a valley full of gold, he would want another valley. And the only thing that would suffice the son of Adam is for his belly to be filled with dirt after he dies and he's buried uh, underground. He will never have enough. If the worldly life is a major concern, he will never have enough and his poverty will always be placed between his eyes. This is the meaning. Now, it doesn't mean he was, he's going to be poor. He may have so much, but he, was always, he will always be poor. He will always act poor. And he will always seek to get more. And at the, the same time, he will disobey Allah to do that, to get dunya. But at the end, he will not get from this world anything except that which has already been written for him. So he, if he gets money through sin, he's going to get money that Allah has decreed for him. But the method he's getting it is through sin. If he obeys Allah, he will get that money as well. But he will get it from a halal source. Because the money he gets, it's not because he disobeyed Allah that he got the money. The money is decreed for him. Obedience or disobedience is only a test for him. On the other hand, whomever makes the hereafter's intention, that means he worships Allah as long as he has faith in Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him enough knowledge. Uh, he goes to masajid, to halaqat al he listens to lessons, he reads Quran, he's happy in his life with this bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. He looks around the world, he sees billions of people, all from the first type, their major concern is dunya. And he looks at himself and says, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Allah did not make me like those people. And the hereafter is his intention. Then his, his situation will be guided for him. The life of this dunya will be easy for him. Earning his living will be easy for him. And his, and his wealth will be placed in his heart. In other words, whatever he has, small or big, he always say, Alhamdulillah, it's enough for me. Because Allah salam, his dua was not, oh Allah, make me rich. He, alayhi salam, used to ask Allah, Allahumma ja'ad rizqa Make my rizq enough for my needs. This is all we need. I mean, like, 
why like what would you do with all those numbers in the back I and mean, it's okay it's good to have money in the back so they can do good deeds with it but why would you kill yourself or disobey Allah for you to make that huge sum of money because at the end you'll die and someone else will enjoy it and you will be punished for it if you didn't get it from halal source so the important thing is for you to have what you need in your life of course if you have extra, alhamdulillah, Uthman bin Affa and uh, Abdurrahman bin Affa they used to be rich and they used to spend for the sake of Allah, for jihad. So it's good to have a lot of money, but you shouldn't kill yourself in trying to gain so much money. As long as you have enough in your life, you say alhamdulillah, if you have opportunities to gain more, you gain more. I'm not telling you you have to be poor, no. But you should not worry about the fact that you need to have what's enough for your for, for your need. This is the important thing. Whatever is enough, whatever you have more, alhamdulillah. If you have more, it's good. You, 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 you give poor people, you, you, you spend for the sake of Allah, you spend for the sake of jihad. This is a good thing to have. But you shouldn't kill yourself to gain that extra. You should only work enough for what is necessary for you. Concern Allah's thing. And then the worldly life would come to him anyway in spite of his, him not seeking it. Because it's rizq that Allah decreed for him. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his wisdom knew which people among his creation deserves to be rich and which people among his creation deserves to be poor. Because there's a hadith, Qudus, even though it has a weakness, the meaning is correct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I knew that if I made my slave poor, he would become a disbeliever. So I made him rich. Because rich richness is what works for him. And then I knew that my other slave would be a disbelief I made him rich, so I made him poor. For example, you have some people that are rich, what they do, they go, they spend money to do injustice to people, they, uh, they do a lot of evil things, if they have money. On the other hand, there are other people who have money and they spend for the sake of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows whom among his slaves needs to be rich, whom needs to be poor, and sometimes the situation changes. Sometimes people are rich, then they become poor, poor they become rich. It's all tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. So a person should not kill himself for dunya because he's only going to get from it what Allah has decreed from him, for him. Concerning Allah's statement, and the good end is for those who have taqwa, is the good end in this life and in the hereafter. In the hereafter, the good end will be paradise for whomever feared Allah. In the Sahih, it is reported that the Messenger of Allah said, I saw in my dream, Prophet said that he saw in his dream a vision as if he were in the home of a person named Uqba bin Rafi'ah. And we were given fresh dates from the type of Ibn Tab. This is a type of dates called Ibn Tab. Therefore, I interpreted this dream to mean that the good final outcome, Aqiba, because the name of the person is Uqba, so he, he interpreted Aqiba from Uqba, that means the outcome, is for us in this world, along with lofty positions, because Rafi' from Rifa, from high positions, lofty positions. And that our religion is good, because the dates is Ibn Tab, so Tab is, that means it's good. So he, alayhi salam, used to like, Al-Fal uh, al-Hasan, and what's Al-Fal al-Hasan is Al-Kalim al tayyibah is a good word. The good word is a good omen. He did not like bad omen, and bad omen is a type of polytheism. But good omen, he alayhi salatu salam used to like it, and that's the good word. So he had this dream, and that he dreamt that the Muslims will have a lofty positions in this world, and that's, that's how the case was for uh, 13 centuries until about 100 years ago when the uh, last uh, empire, the Khilafah, the last Khilafah was was broken from within through the uh, the Kafir Kamal Ataturk, uh, may Allah curse him and increase his punishment, who was a Jew that claimed to be a Muslim. And uh, there was a sect called, uh, I forgot what they are called, uh, anyway, they were Jews. They, they they were Jews in reality, but they claimed to be Muslims. Forgot the name of that of that sect, and uh, they made uh, an organization. And he basically uh, wor walked, worked his way up to the top, and then, to the help of the kufar, he uh, <coughs> did away with the Khilafah. 
the Don Me. Yeah, they are called the Don Me. They are Jews that claim to be Muslims, but in reality, they remain Jews. Uh, so after that, the Muslims have been divided into small countries, getting weapons from the Kufar to kill each other and fight for the dunya, etc. And this is only a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us because of our sins. If you look at the Muslim land today, it's full of sins. Muslims don't care about the, the, the hereafter anymore, don't care about the religion. All they want is dunya. They just want to live like animals, eat, sleep, and have enough money. Uh, uh, zina, interest, alcohol has become rampant uh, and openly being sold in the land of Islam when it's not supposed to be. So, of course, any sins, any calamities that happen to us, as Allah says, is because of our sins. But of course, the good news, alhamdulillah, is that the Khilafah will come back, inshallah, sooner rather than later. And its capital will be Jerusalem, as we always said. And there are going to be 12 Khalifa in total who are on the uh, on the way of, of Khilafah Rashida. We had four or five, according to some scholars, and Mahdi al Muntadar is one of them, and there are going to be others. <coughs> so, the good and, and the lofty positions are for this Ummah. It's only a matter of time and a matter of uh, punishment for the past hundred years, and a matter of who's going to work to towards the, the good end that this. Uh, Ummah was promised, and those who are going to give up on it and follow their dunya and their worldly lives, the worldly lives and the worldly lusts and desires. Next, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Waqalu wa la yatina bi ayatim min Rabbi, aw lam taatihim bayna tuma fi al-sufuf al-ula, wa law an ahlaknahum bi athabin qabilhi la qalu." لقالوا ربنا لولا أرسلت إلينا رسولا فنتبع آياتك من قبل أن نذل ونخزى قل كل متربص فتربصوا فستعلمون من أصحاب الصراط السوي ومن اهتدى they say, why does he not bring us a sign from his Lord? Has there not come to them the proof of that which is in the former scriptures? And if we had destroyed them, we'd be tormented with a punishment for this before giving them the Quran, giving them the signs. They would surely have said, our Lord, if only you had sent us a messenger, we should certainly, certainly have followed your ayat before we're humiliated in this grace. Say, each one is waiting, so wait you too. And you shall know who are they that are on the straight path and who are they that have let themselves be guided Allah the exalted informs us about these believers in their statement When they say Lawla, why does not, meaning why doesn't Muhammad bring us some proof? First of all, they meant a sign that was proof of the truthfulness of his claim that he was a messenger of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ta'tihim Has there not come to them the proof of that which is in the former scriptures? This means the Quran, which Allah revealed to him while he was an illiterate man who could not write well. We did not study with the people of the book, yet the Qur'an contains information about the people of the past that tells of their events from times long ago, like Ad, Thamud, etc. And it agrees with the authentic information in the previous books concerning these matters. Not only that, but the Qur'an is the supervisor of these other books. The Qur'an verifies what is correct in those other books and explains the mistakes that were falsely placed in these books and attributed to the books. In other words, if you have something in the Quran in, or in the Bible, then you check it against the Quran. If it's also in the Quran, that means that is correct information. That means the Quran is confirming it. If it's contrary to what the Quran says, 
then that means that's the information that was inserted by the monks and rabbis and priests in these other books. And it's not something that they hide. I mean, there's different versions of the Bible, uh, etc. They change things and they add and subtract as they, the, the times uh, call for. Because it's no longer a book revealed by Allah. It is a book that is written by mankind. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it upon himself subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect this Quran because there is no other book after it. And Allah did not take upon himself to protect the other books. So this is out of design, not, not uh, as a coincidence. <clears throat> and this uh, statement that the Kufar said, that they want a verse, this is similar to what is said in Surah Al-Ankabut, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَرَحْمَةً وَذِكْرَى لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ And they say, why are not signs sent down to him from his Lord? Say the signs are only with Allah, and I am only a plain warner. It is not sufficient for them that we have sent down to you the book which is recited to them, verily hearing is a mercy and a reminder for people who believe. In the two Sahih says recorded that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, "Ma min Nabiyin illa wa qad utiya min al-ayati ma aman ala mithlih al-bashar, wa inna ma kana al-ladhi utiyuhu wahyan aw haahu Allahu li, fa arju an akuna aktharahum tabi'an yom al-qiyamah." There was not any prophet except that he was given signs that caused men to believe, like Musa Alayhi Salam was given the staff and the hand that. Uh, shine brightly like a light bulb and uh, other miracles. Isa alayhi salam is given a miracle of being able to resuscitate the dead uh, with Allah as well, uh, to cure the leprosy, uh, deafness, etc. But those were miracles that were seen by the people that existed at the time. The Quran, however, is a miracle that was witnessed by the people that existed at the time of the Prophet. And it is still witnessed today. And that's why uh, sometimes when uh, Christians, you know, they try to say the Quran is not from Allah, I tell them, don't take my word for it that the Quran is from Allah, but you go ahead and read the Quran and you prove to yourself that it is from Allah or not. So he also said that which I've been given, Quran is a revelation that Allah has revealed to me. So I hope that I have the most followers among the prophets on the day of resurrection because obviously it is a miracle being witnessed and he is the last of Messenger Isa salam so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his wish true to make his dua <coughs> true in his in this hadith prophet Isa salam only mentioned the greatest of the signs that he was given which is the Quran however he did have other miracles it's not like he only had the Quran's miracle I mean like the the fact that the moon was split in two halves and then put each side on a mountain People coming from uh, the Levant, Sham, were, were able to see that. And then Quraysh said, oh, you know, his magic reached as far as the Levant. Uh, there were other miracles where he had a salam. Water would gush from between his, his fingers when his uh, companions were thirsty. The uh, fact that from a single uh, vessel full of milk, uh, hundreds of people would drink and the, 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 the quantity of the milk would never change, and on and on and on, many other miracles. And these miracles have been recorded in the books that discuss them, and they have been affirmed in the places that mention them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّا أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ بِعَذَابٍ مِّيَا قَبْلِهِ لَقَانُوا لَقَانُوا رَبَّنَا لَوْ لَا أَرْسَلْتَ إِلَيْنَا رَسُولًا فَنَتَّبِعَ آيَاتِكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنَّ ذِلَّا نَخْزَى this means if we had destroyed these rejected people before sending them a noble messenger and before revealing the Quran to them, they would have said, Our Lord, if only you sent us a messenger, that means before you destroyed us, if you only sent us a messenger, we would have believed in him and followed him. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends messengers so that people don't have this excuse. So that people will not have a uh, will not have 
an excuse or an argument against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, after he sends the messengers. Because if he doesn't send them home, they will say, well, the message will never reach us. If it reached us, we would have believed. Of course, they're lying. And Allah proved their lies by sending the messengers and they belied them. They opposed them and even tried to kill them. So we should certainly have followed your ayat before we were humiliated in disgrace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that these rejectors are stubborn and obstinate and they will not believe. In other words, this is just an argument they're having. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, some people, uh, those uh, that Allah decreed because of their actions, Allah decreed that they shall be among people of hellfire because Allah knew that it doesn't matter what kind of message is given to them, they will reject it. These people will be dwellers of hellfire to them, even if every sign should come to them until they see the pain. Uh, these people will not believe, even if every sign should come to them until they see the painful torment. So some people will never believe. Allah knows these people. And yet he still sends them messengers and warners uh, and people to give them the message so that on their judgment they cannot tell Allah that we never received the message. This is also as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ بَعْرَكُمْ فَاتَّبِعُهُ وَاتَّقُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ And this is a blessed book of the Qur'an which we have sent down. So follow it and have taqwa of Allah so that you may receive mercy. And Allah said, بِمَا كَانُ يَصْدِفُونَ This is in Surah Al-An'am. Uh, Allah also says, وَأَقْسَمُهُ بِاللَّهِ جَهْدَ أَيْمَانِهِمْ لَإِنْ جَاءَهُمْ نَذِيرٌ لَيَكُونُنَّ أَهْدَى مِنْ إِحْدَى الْأُمَمْ and they swore by Allah, their most binding oath, that if a warner would come to them from Allah, they would be more guided than any of the nations before them, the Jews and Christians. But then when a warner came to them, it only increased them in aversion to the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not believe, and they, they said, you are not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah willed, he would have sent angels. So they just trying to find excuses to not believe. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, وَأَقْسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ جَهْدَ أَيْمَانِهِمْ لَإِنْ جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَةٌ لَيُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهَا قُلْ إِنَّمَا الْآيَةُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ And this were the strongest oaths by Allah, that if there comes and came to them a sign, they would surely believe therein. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says when he sent them a messenger, they said if only were given that, which the messengers were given. You know, one of the arguments they said, Why was this Quran revealed on Muhammad? Perchance it would have been uh, revealed on one of the two uh, lofty men of the two towns, Quraysh, uh, the, the Mecca, or a Ta'if. In other words, why, why did Allah send it to Muhammad? And this is what similar to what the Jews said, you know, when their Prophet said, uh, Allah sent you Talut as a Malik, as a king. They said, you know, how can he be a king? And we are more deserving of a king, uh, the, a king, a kingdom than him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قل, قل Say, O Muhammad, to those who deny you, oppose you, and continue their, in their disbelief and obstinance. Each one is waiting among you and us. So you to wait. This is a command to wait. That means anticipate the end result to see who is on the correct path and who's going to be straightly guided and who's going to be punished. And you shall know who are they that they are on the Sarat al sawi that means the straight road, and who are, have led themselves to be guided, meaning guidance to the truth and the path of right guidance. This is similar to Allah's statement. And they will know the disbelievers when they will see the punishment before them, who is that that is most astray from the path? Of course they are because they are being punished. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Tomorrow they will know who is liar, the insolent one. Tomorrow means the day of judgment. This is the end of Tafsir Surah Taha. All praise and gratitude is to Allah. The Tafsir of Surah Al-Anbiya will follow this if Allah wills. All praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will see this tomorrow, uh, next week, inshallah, rather.
we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us the beneficial knowledge and enable us to finish this explanation of the Quran, to understand it, and to apply in our daily lives, to increase our provisions, and to increase our faith and our knowledge through it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and our families and our provisions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring back the Muslims to the true path, especially Amen. the youth among them, and to make them gather around a single leader that will lead them to establish truth and justice and Islam in the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us hasan in this dunya, hasan in the hereafter, and to safeguard us from the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa Ta'ala to, to make the best day for our existence the day that we meet him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to finally together us with Muhammad in the highest prayer that's with Firdaus. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.